skaters in London. Shout out to uh, Luke Campbell, uh, the 2012 Olympic gold medalist over there. Uh, he just fought uh, Jorge Leonidas. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, if it wasn't for um, that knockdown, it should have been either a draw or he should have won by a point. It was right. a close fight. I give him credit. Um, actually, you know, I sparred with Luke Campbell. Great oh, champion. Nice. I sparred yeah. with him back in Florida because he used to train. He stays training over there in Miami. And um, I've done work with him. I actually, uh, if I would have, I had left during the time he was, um, during the time he was getting ready for Jorge Leonidas. But I did spar with him a couple times before I left. Uh, but he's a good man. And I hope he, he just comes back stronger. You know, it's a minor setback for a major comeback. Now tell me about your core team. Who do you mostly work with? Of course, now we need dad, but um, not everyone knows that. So in, um, tell me about your whole entire team. My, my, my team is very small. That's the way I like it. Um, you know, uh, the bigger the, the bigger the entourage, it's not, it's not good. You know, um, but starting with my father, you know, he's my coach. Uh, also my strength and conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. You know, so he stays me, he puts me on. He's my boxing coach, everything. Um, and as for, it's very small. My, my, my team is very small and my mother. But it's all in the family. My mother, she does my nutritioning and uh, she takes care of my food and she's always watching my, my, my intake and food and everything. So that's really it, I'll be honest. Uh, that's, that's all I need, to be honest. That's though. all you I need. I mean, in time, when it comes to it, I'll, I'll get a chef. That way my mom can know and she'll learn and pick from that. Uh, but for, for right now, that's, all my, that's my whole team. Awesome. Um, so actually within the next five years, do you have like a five-year plan of how many you know weight classes you're willing to go up, not go up or down? Do you have like a five-year plan well, or so? We don't know the future, you know. Um, mm -hmm. To be honest, it's like I'm 20. I'm still growing. Okay. I'm not fully developed yet. Yeah. And that's the thing that is scary about me. Uh, I look, see, I'm a kid when I'm outside, but when I fight, I'm a man. Right. You know, I look like a man. I fight like a man. Um, but in reality, I don't know, you know, five years, we see what happens. I know I'll be world champion before then. I'll probably be a multi-champion, multi you know, in multiple divisions. I think the highest I'll probably go up throughout my whole career, probably be 160. Okay. Even 168. My father was big, you know. Big. Yeah. He was weighing like 175, 200 and something pounds. Because I see like muscle maturity spread like yeah. pretty much like every five years in a mm -hmm. fighter. Like that, that 25, you know, when you're you 25, get that spread. Just, 30, 35 yeah. again, that, you know, that muscle mass changes. So it, it changes, uh, you know, our body, the way we want to eat changes every seven years. Yeah. So things like that, you know, so in five years, I got to say, I'll be world champion before then and we'll see where it takes me from there. When you are like uh, in your camp, how much uh, weight do you try to not cut cut what's your maximum like you don't want to cut that's you know well i don't go up that much that's okay. the thing like I was, the most i'll go up is 10 pounds and that's a lot okay. for me uh usually i'll be seven pounds over pounds. over okay. my weight limit anything like that um but i try to cut you know i try to stay around my weight um throughout my whole camp that way i'm comfortable at that weight uh, i do spar with older um heavier heavier fighters and everything that way i when i fight anybody in my weight class it's not, it's not a big, it's nothing big to me. It's not a big, it's not a, it's, it's a big difference though. Mm -hmm. In the fact that when they punch me, I don't really feel it. Right. Know? But, um, yeah, I try not to go as, I don't try to go up. I don't yeah. Try to go up. Yeah. So, so far, you know, in your early career, what have you noticed that you've already started doing better than you did at the beginning of your My career? body shots, mm -hmm. uh, placing punches mm -hmm. and also my jab, uh, all those three things, combine them together, that's what makes Teofimo Lopez and even better. But of course, nah, but my speed has always been there. So how much uh, does your strategy now play into your pro bouts? Is it more or less versus the amateurs? Do you have, um, like, how's that blueprint versus an amateur blueprint? I, I feel better as a professional. Um, I get to place my punches, like I said. Um, I look for my shots, I set them up, it's a bait. I get to take my time a little bit with them. You know, even though it's three minutes still, and that's the same thing I was doing in the amateurs. Um, biggest difference is that uh, that I'm you know, I'm knocking these guys out, and the judges can't take that away from me. There you go. Yeah, never let it in the hands of the judges. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, we got no. <laughs> so tell me about like your past camps. Uh, who have you sparred with? Luke Campbell, um, Sean Porter. Um, who else? Ashley Thea Payne. Yes. Uh, champions, there's great champions I sparred with, uh, sparred with tough opponents, um, you know, I sparred with Devin Haney too, you know, uh, he's very known, 
That's why I went twice. It was fun <laughs> that <face>. for me. <laughs> what is that face? What happened? Because, you know, people hype these guys up. Right. Put them in a certain way, but when Teofimo comes in, it's a whole different story. Oh, you know, who's got to, that footage? Who's got the footage not, on not their phone? Not to take anything away from <laughs> Not to take away anything from them, but, you know, he's young. He got a lot to develop, you know. I try right. to give him a little, little some, some, but, you know, these guys are not on my level. There you go. So now being out here in Vegas, uh, you know, how's that, you know, played into your workouts being out here well, now? And you see, I'm in top range. Yeah. Right now. I'm in top range gym and uh, basically my gym, you know, um, and I, I like it here, man. I love the atmosphere. I love the way it is. I love the way that, uh, you know, you're strictly on your main thing and that's to be world champion, but also mm -hmm. at the same time, you're dedicating yourself. And I, now I understand why Floyd moved to Vegas, you know? Okay. You stay away from everybody. You get away from all the people, um, the entourage, everybody. And then you just by yourself. You know, I, I come here, I train, I do what I do. I go home, I go watch a movie with my family, anything like that. You know, I'm a family man. So I love to do that. And um, I'm just thankful, thankful for everything. What is your biggest challenge so far? My biggest challenge? I don't have any. What? I don't have a challenge, nah. My biggest challenge, to be honest, yeah, is me. Okay. Uh, only I could be myself. Only I could could uh, could stop what I'm doing. But of course, God, that's that's health, and you know, without health, I'm not I'm not gonna do what I have to do. So, um, but really, my biggest challenge is who's gonna be there? Who? Which Teal female? Who's gonna be there when I'm fighting? You know, is it gonna be the one that's always smiling and just playing it off and going out there and do what he does, or is it gonna be a guy that's gonna choke? Right. So we were just talking about this again because it happened again um, in UFC. Um, Heather Hardy, the boxer, going into MMA. So that came up again uh, Sunday morning. I was on the show, uh, the final bell, and so that came back up again. Yeah. And you know, of she course, the, the yeah, nose. one kick to the nose, and uh, you know, yeah. just that was gross. Um, how do you feel about like you know all this mixing and like you know, of course, you know Mayweather, you know McGregor, Mayweather now Heather McGregor. Hardy, and how do you feel about this? You know, MMA and boxing, when boxers going well, to MMA, it sets it off right there. It sets it off right there. When MMA fighters want to come and into our sport, they're gonna lose. If we go to their sport, we're gonna lose. It's just the difference. Um, there's nothing to it. Um, you know, we don't do kicking. We know about punching. They want to learn how to fight, and they want to learn how to fight standing up. We don't. Uh, they know how to fight. Stand, uh, un they know how to do ground and say ground, ground and pound and everything. Um, I just understand why these boxers. She was undefeated, right? Yeah, yeah. Time. She's a world. She's a world champion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand why I go to the UFC for what to show that you're oh, that you could beat anybody at UFC too. No. I'll get my I'll get my butt kicked in the UFC. I don't care. I say it because I don't I don't kick. I don't kick. I don't do none of that. Yeah, we were having all that talk. I mean, do are they? This is me. You know, my opinion doesn't have to be. A, you know, people take it too personal. But as a me, I feel like you could learn UFC mm -hmm. or MMA, anything that the art. You could learn that. You could learn that. You could become world champion and all that. In boxing, you can't. You either got it, or you don't. This is not a sport that is. That's why you do boxing. You can't play boxing. Yeah. I mean, you do MMA, but in reality, I mean, elbowing and kicking, anybody could do that. I'll yeah, be that honest. If you teach me a year, two years of doing that, I'll be, I'll be up there. All right. So you can start calling out people more like sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then one quick one. You know, what does separate Teofimo Lopez from the rest of your division? I mean, it speaks for itself. The way I come well, into the ring. Well, tell London. Tell the Europe. Way, the way I come into the ring, the way I, I, I place my shots, the way I'm so developed at a young age. Um, only 7 and 0, 6 knockouts. So, so early in my career, and you could tell that I, it looks like I've been there for years. Uh, that's just the difference. This, the difference between Teofimo and all these other fighters and all these prospects coming up, I do not fight like an amateur. I am professional. I don't need time to develop me to be adapted to the professional uh, stage. No, I am not. That's not my style. My style is not amateur-like at all. Since I've been eight years old, since I started fighting fighting competition, eight years old, my style has never been as an amateur. And it took me, and I've gotten to the highest pinnacle of amateur boxing, which was the Olympics. Although they ripped me off in the first round, 
Um, I still kept on fighting, but that's the difference. Teofimo Lopez is um, just one of a kind. The one that you see every 20 years or 25. I was born, I was born with this, but also boxing chose me. It, see, these athletes, these fighters, they're great champions, yes, but they chose. If you ever hear them, they'd be like, you know, I chose this. this I chose this life. Nah, I didn't choose this. They chose me. How did, uh, actually, how did you get discovered by Top Rank? How did I get discovered by Top yeah. Rank? Um, uh, Miguel Diaz, which was okay. a cut man. He's a cut yeah. Yeah, man. And also uh, Frank Stay. Okay. So uh, both of them from Top Rank, you know, there was, everybody had their eyes on the... <laughs> Everybody had their eyes on. <laughs> everybody had their eyes on the Olympics during that time, okay. 2016. You know, because you want to get the mm -hmm. best Olympics coming out. Um, but that's how they discovered me. Uh, they talked to Todd DeBoof, Bob Arum, and um, you know, because those guys are too. You know, they're high up. There. Yeah. You know, they let everybody else do the, do their job. You're you close know? with Bob, aren't you? I saw when I saw you in New York. Bob, you know, um, I love Bob, man. Bob Arum, you know, uh, I'm thankful for you know. Being with Top Rank, it was a decision I had to make. Uh, I had different options. I had, um, you know, Rock Nation, um, uh, Lou DiBella, Entertainment, so things like that. Um, I had decisions and options, but I decided to go with Top Rank, um, and I feel like it was the best option for me. And uh, Bob Arum, you know, every time I fight at Madison Square Garden, I just feel like, you know, uh, it's only best that, uh, and it's only right that I dedicate this fight every time I'm at the Garden for him and to him. Since he's from Brooklyn, I'm from Brooklyn, I feel like, um, uh, I think it's just right. So, you know, you know, um, Bob Arum, you know, he's definitely going to see me become world champion very soon. And, you know, um, we're just going to enjoy it. Um, so who who do you want next? Give me that list. I it's want, inedible. Listen, we want to know. I'm going to be honest. Look, I'm not here to say that uh, anybody's better than me. And so with that being said, nobody, nobody's better than me. It's just the, <laughs> that's the bottom line. I'm not, this is not the sport to come and say that I feel like, you know, this guy has a good competition with me. No, I am the best and I'm there to prove it. And I'm going to show everybody. Um, and no matter what it is, whether you like me, or you don't like me, you're still going to watch me. That's just the bottom line. Okay. Um, I want everybody, everybody at 135 division, everybody at 140, whatever it is. Um, I know I'm going to 140. Um, maybe not now, you know, let me get a title. Let me win the title at 135. Now I'll go up. Okay. Um, I'm a big 135 pounder. Yeah, I about to say, I, I know because I remember like seeing you, know, seeing you fight like 132s and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm what do you do? You chop off your head? I'm a big 135 <laughs> pounder. Yeah. I'm only getting, it's crazy that I'm only, I'm developing even more. I'm, I'm getting yeah. stronger. My punches, feeling, I, I, I want to let them out. I want to, yeah. I feel like harder shots, you know. Um, but I want everybody, all these young prospects, 2016 Olympians. They don't got nothing on me. It's just right. bottom line. And I, it speaks for itself, whether they like it or not. You know, I'm not here. You know, I, sometimes I'll be too humble with these guys. Uh, you can't be nice, you know. They want to make it a competition, and there you have it. You can't beat me. You know you, and this is for the, all the 2016 Olympic prospects. You can't beat me. You're not better than me. And it's the truth. That's the difference. And uh, whether they like it or not, if you don't like it, we fight. There you go. And Something to fight about. <laughs> Go. All right, Dad. So, thank you for having me here. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and your son. This is your opportunity. Tell us about Teofimo Lopez. Well, I think um, by far he's the best prospect out of the Olympics of 2016. Um, I mean, he's showing it, making uh, everybody look easy. I mean, he's one of the kids that uh, goes in the ring and um, everything he does, um, he... He knows what he's doing. He's just not throwing punches in there. He's very smart, very fast, very strong. He's developing faster. Every fight, I see him stronger. You know, he just turned 20, uh, you know, July uh, 30th then of this year, you know, and he's, he's, he's just starting. I mean, uh, he's, he doesn't have his full capacity yet, he's, but he's developing fast. I mean, I tell everybody to look at tape and look at, you know, because they're telling me, Oh, you know, he's your kid. Of course, you're going to be talking good stuff about him. You know, but uh, all you have to do is go look at tape on YouTube and you look at all the greats. You know, ain't, they ain't doing what my son is doing. Period. Their first five, six fights, seven fights, seven and oh, six knockouts. But the way he's moving in that ring, the way he's not getting hit, the way he's moving around the ring and hitting and not getting hit, the quickness, the smartness, making it look easy. 
I mean, top fighters like Floyd Mayweather and all these fighters weren't doing that their first seven fights. That's all I'm saying. You know, he's just developing faster than any other person I've seen. And I study a lot of boxing, you know. The only reason why he's doing everything that he's doing is because I grabbed everything since he was small from all the greatest. I mean, Floyd Mayweather was a big inspiration for us, you know, um, on defense and the way he moved and quickness. And I implemented that in my son. Also, a lot of fights like Mike Tyson, you know, um, like I always say, he, he's like a Sh Sugar Ray Leonard, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather put together, you know, because he's, he's a very aggressive fighter. As soon as the bell rings, he's hitting you every two seconds, every second with accuracy. You know, uh, doesn't miss. He hardly miss. He hardly gets hit. You know, if he gets hit twice in a, in a round, is a lot. You know, um, and ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody has ever done that. So I just want everybody to, you know, keep an eye for Teofimo Lopez and watch him in the future. He's uh, 20 years old with top rank. He's 7-0 uh, with six knockouts. Um, and just big things are coming, you know. He was born in Brooklyn, uh, representing Honduras in the Olympics 2016. Uh, I thought he could have went far, but, um, you know, he just got a bad decision, you know. Um, you know, he's, he's just had a bad, bad amateur uh, experience because they, they're always holding him down, you know. But we, he always found a way to get to the Olympics, and he did. Even though he won the Olympic trials here in the United States in, in 2016. Um, so, you know... It's just a matter of time before, you know, he becomes world champion in multiple divisions. Look out for Teofimo Lopez, best prospect out of the Olympics. And I'm his father, Teofimo Lopez. I've been training him. And I mean, I talk what I see, you know. Um, best fighter out there for me right now is my son. And that's what I believe in. I, I know boxing. I see boxing. I've been studying boxing all my life. And, not, you know, the best way to study boxing and implement it on your, on, your, on your fighters is by watching the greats and taking what they have best and implement it on your fighters. That's the way I learned. Nobody taught me how to coach. That's the way I learned, you know. And it's just been, it's just been the best ever since, you know. He's had 170 uh, amateur fights with only 20, 20 um, bad decisions that I've seen. And to me, he never loses, you know. He's just, he's just had one of those... One, it's one of those kids that you know that that, that works very hard to what, where he's at right now, and he's not gonna give up. You know, a lot of uh, these kids they've been given everything, and they're showing it right now. You know, in the pros, you know they're showing that they were given everything in the Olympics, and they were given everything in the amateurs. You know, when you take everything from a kid that works so hard, and 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 he just keeps on going and going and going, he's gonna be the best, and it's showing right now. So you know. The future of boxing is Teofimo Lopez, and um, I just want everybody to check him out, and that's all I got to say right now. these little cutie pies here. So first video. All right, what do you think? How many times do you think you've been punched in the face? How many times I've been punched in the face? What do you think? Shoot, throughout 14 years? There you go, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I'm not punch drunk, so I haven't been hit a lot. Um, let's say, can't lie. Shoot. Alright, when I fight, I get hit like one. <laughs> like, when, you fight. when I fight, I get hit maybe one or two, three times. Max. I can believe that. I you can, can believe, believe that, that, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I've seen they don't it. even pass, you know, yeah. those amount of rounds. Also, because I always defend myself. Um, what, shoot. that makes a whole total 12? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be 12. Um, and if we want to say throughout my whole thing, I don't know, honey. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, times. nothing I've like a it. question from a six year old to throw you off. All right, mm -hmm. next one from the 719 fight team. How many LAD chains? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 
Okay. How many hours I train? Yep. I train um four four to six hours every day. Not too sure. I have like three sessions, so I break. I do. Uh, I have uh, separate times to do it. Like I'll work out in the morning, box in the afternoon, and then late at night. My last session will be uh, basically going to the gym and doing strength and conditioning. And is this during camp or just your regular schedule? Regular schedule. Awesome. All right. Next question for the seven one nine fight team. Your favorite, favorite combination during a fight? Well, it's always the jab. The jab is always right. the start. So I start with my jab. Um, it'll be one, two, and then left to the body. Nice. I've seen that a few times too. How do you get your motivation to do what you do? Um, you know, faith, man. I just always had that in me. Like, I never stopped, never gave up. Yeah. I wasn't, this ain't mine. My, my, my thing is, I believe I'm not meant for here. I think any, none of us are meant to be working a nine to five, you know, anything like that. So I, I'm thankful to be where I'm at. That's what motivates me to know that I can help and motivate, you know, um, my family and everything. But also my father, he motivates me to right. do better and become better. He's good at that. Next question for the 719 fight team. Why is, why is fighting important to you? And what is the most important to you? Aww, did you get that? Why is, why is fighting important to you? And what is the most important to you? What is the most important thing? You sure they're seven? They ask better uh, questions on these interviews. Uh, they're a fight team. News reporters. I know, they're in the fight team, so they, yeah. they know what's up. Um, what motivates me to, well, I like fighting because I just feel like I didn't choose boxing, you know, it chose me. So that's why I feel like I was just meant for it. And uh, what motivates me, what makes me keep on going and why I want to keep fighting for it is because uh, I want to change that life cycle that I have with my family. That way uh, they don't have to work a nine to five with anybody and they could just do what they want to do, what they love to do. So, and that way, um, the same thing that I'm doing, I want to give that back. All right, another question for 719 Fight Team. You're being grilled today by six year olds and seven year olds. This is awesome. For real. Why did you start fighting? Why did you start fighting? When did I start fighting? When did I start fighting? I think that was why. Oh, why? This is why. Why did I start fighting? Like I said, um, my dad brought me into the gym. Uh, my oh, dad, okay. he was boxing at the time. My dad was trying out. You know, my dad was like a street fighter. He would knock everybody out, so he was one of those guys that wanted to try it in the, in the ring, see what they I could, could see do. It. Yeah, so uh, my dad, he was a heavy puncher, mm -hmm. so that's where I get it from. Um, but he brought me in the gym when I was, uh, well, he's always had me have the, the feeling of boxing since okay. I was like three. Because okay. that's when my dad started. He started when I was around that time when I was born. And, uh, but I really started when I was six. Uh, my dad went to the gym. Uh, we had just moved to Florida. And he, uh, he went to the gym and I did the pads. He went to go park the car. And when I got back, I already knew the combination, and that's when he knew, you know what? Forget this, I'm gonna just dedicate my life to him and his boxing. That's awesome, park the car and you get a world champion. There you go. Good job, you're a good parker, Dad. Mm -hmm. did you have in the past five years? How many fights I've had in the past so, yeah. five years? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, right. I know, your five I've years had, cover a lot for I've you. Had, I've had in the past, what, 13 years as an amateur, mm -hmm. well, from eight to eight to 19, I had 170 amateur okay. fights. Yeah, because I tried counting that up, and I'm like, uh So in five years, we're talking about, I probably have had maybe close to 100. Nice. What do you think before your matches? I don't say this a lot, but what I do is that I feed uh, positivity into my into my head all the time. And uh, I just, uh, when they give me the mouthpiece, I walk back and forth and I just say, I'm the best. Ain't nobody faster than me. Nobody uh, smarter than me. Nobody stronger than me. So I just put, I feed all that positivity into me and I really believe it. So when I go out there, that's why I never, I'm never nervous because I already know they can't beat me. I'm too smart, I'm too fast, and um, I'm too strong. Right. When I see you walk out, I mean, you're the you're the guy that's smiling. Yeah. That's always, what, always that's, smiling. That's I love what, it. That's what I love that, to do. I love a guy's fight face as a smile because that's actually scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how long it took you guys to get where you are today. Ooh, oh, it's been a lifelong. It's been yeah. a long journey. Yeah. Um, 
winning and everything and I still didn't get my fair share and I still had to fight for it. So Right. And I'm still I'm not I'm still not there yet. Of course not. So we still fighting. We're still fighting our way up. Mm -hmm. How we not black out? That's a, black. that's the difference between uh, an athlete and a a, a, a God gifted fighter. Mm -hmm. We know how to stay composed. We know right. how to not let the crowd get to us. That's that's the different things. It's those little things, those little tactics that get you uh, that could get you thrown off and get knocked right. out. And or you, know, you stay composed and know that you know what I know what I'm gonna do. I'm the best at what I do. So really, I don't black out. But I do have a tunnel vision, so I, I block, I black everybody out, basically. So I, I just block everybody, and all I'm focused on is that one fighter. Awesome. Well, that's it from 719. Let's send him a quick video, if you don't mind, to 719 by saying hello real quick. Did this with Americon. It's really fun. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. How are you doing? It's 719. I'm out here uh, with Teofimo Lopez. He just answered all your questions. Anything you'd like to say to the kids? No, nah, I just want to say um, keep being in the gym, you know, get your good grades. You know, shout out to 719 Fight Team, right? Yep, you got it. There you go. Uh, Teofimo Lopez, thank you guys for the questions. It was amazing. Um, for a young age, I got to say you guys are well developed. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Stay in the gym. You see me. I don't smoke. I don't drink. You shouldn't either. So just do good in school and um, have fun with everything that you're doing. Mom, wait, Mom, don't forget to say, make sure to click the subscribe button and make sure to uh, thumbs up. Bye.